Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about saving your photographs for print. Print specifically. Now, there's two different ways that I save things. It's traditional, actually, three different ways. Save them for future use as a 16 bit TIFF, so that if I need to do any further editing, I do that. Save them for the web at a JPEG that's very small, and then saving for print. All three are saved in different ways. Now, the way you save for print is different than, than the way you save for, uh, for anything else for that matter. And there's some certain things that you're going to do when you save for print that are relatively destructive to the photo. So the first thing you want to do is find all of the pictures that you're going to uh, have for your, your show that you're going to do. And you want to copy them, physically copy them. I know on a, on a PC that's press control C, open up a new folder, control V for paste and get those copies into a new folder. Now you don't want to do this stuff permanently to those photographs because what's going to happen is you're going to lose all that important data um, that's on there and, and make a destructive copy. So the, this is saving specifically for print. All right. So these are the six photographs that I'm going to have in my show. Uh, these four that you see here are going to be um, 11 by 14 and then these are going to be 18 by 24, a brother sister piece, relatively large, really close to each other in the show. So I'm going to show you how I save for the web. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the specific things that I go through, image size, the crop tool, brightness, um, high pass, and then saving it as. And then I'm going to, as I do it on the first one, I'm going to make it an action so that as I'm doing all these things, all I have to do is press play on the rest of these and bam, it's done. So here we go. I'm going to open up the first one right here in Photoshop. Now I've already done all the edits on a print piece. So I know that this, this photograph is ready for print. All I need to do is press open image. Don't worry about what's going on in camera raw with this TIFF file. So I'm going to go ahead and zero out this crop tool up here. Um, I'm going to give away a part of a, actually I'll just clear it and I won't accept that. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is get your image size correct. So I'm going to go to image and then go to image size. And as you can see in this photo, it's about 10 by 13. It'll still make a great 11 by 14 print by going up just a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is you can, I could actually upload this right now to MPEX and tell them to do an 11 by 14 for me. And then they would set up all the crops and they'd set up all the, uh, the stuff and I could do it in MPEX. I prefer to do it all on the front side. So as soon as I upload it to something like MPEX, all I got to do is say, Hey, make a print of this for me. Thank you. And that's it. So, um, what you can do here is we're going to enlarge this slightly. So under the resample box down here, you're going to go to uh, by cubic smoother for enlargement. And we're going to change the width to 14. Actually, let's change the height to 11. So it's basically whichever one uh, makes the, uh, I guess the common denominator, right? So that would be the 11. If we go to, if we go to 14 on the width, then we only get a height of 10.5. Now we need a height total of 11. So let's just do that at 11 and then we'll worry about the crop later. Okay, so I'm gonna press okay there. So now what I wanna do is set this up for an eight by 10 or 11 by 14, my apologies. So there's a couple different things you can do here in the crop tool specifically. Now I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC. So some things might be different on past versions of Photoshop, but th regardless, I know on CS5 and CS6, there was these boxes here where you could change the ratio and pl plug in whatever you wanted. Now, if you want to actually do a, squ a square ratio, you can actually click on this box and it'll, it'll automatically prompt you. So say you're doing a 12 by 12, it brings you up with the crop for a 12 by 12. So you can do whatever you want there. Now I know specifically that I want this to be 11 by 14. So I'm going to put 11 here and then 14 here. Okay, perfect. I messed up. I need those to flip flop right here. I know you can do this in Adobe Photoshop CC. You can swap the heights and the widths. So right here, I need to decide okay, some of this stuff is going to get cropped out. Now with this picture, the information that's on the left and right hand side may not be that important. What is important though is more, I guess more of these clouds over here than this building over here. So let me see what happens when I bring it over here. All right. I like that the building had a little bit of room to breathe, a little bit of negative space there. So I'll, I'll, I'll leave it like that. Now, the other thing you can do here is actually go into your settings and go into the, uh, down here, you can actually change the color of what the outside of the um, crop will be. 
So it, the red is obviously not the color I want to use, but maybe I want to bring the opacity up a little bit instead of having it be 0.75, maybe something like 90%, so that I can really see what that crop is going to look like. Um, you can even do it in white if that helps because there's going to be a matte around there too. It, Whatever color you prefer, you can do it. I mean, bright orange if you want to, go right ahead. I prefer something dark. That way it narrows my vision onto the brightest parts, which would be the actual photo. So I'm at 11 by 14 now. Uh, if I go ahead and press enter and commit to that crop or press the check mark, I can commit to that crop. And now this photo is going to be saved as 11 by 14. This, there's a couple of things I need to do here. Now, what I suggest is before you do any edits to any photos, if you know you're going to be printing with someone like MPix, go ahead and send them um, all of your pictures in 5 by 7 or 8 by 10 just to see what it's going to look like. Get them printed out that way. And that's what I did. They, I consider them test prints. Now, it cost me, um, you know, about three dollars per eight by ten, maybe a dollar fifty per five by seven on MPEX, the regular MPEX, and you know, that's it's really a, a, a non-issue as far as value is concerned when you come to selling these. So if you do a test print, you can tell by looking at that test print that hey, maybe it needs to be a little bit brighter, or maybe it needs to be a little bit darker, maybe it printed out too uh, too bright. So I know by looking at my photographs that what I need to do is add a brightness of about plus 10 and then I need to add my high pass sharpen and then I do my saving. So what I'm going to do before I do anything else, I've got my crop done, I've got uh, the, the, uh, the photo where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and start an action. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a saving action. Let's go uh, save for print. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new layer. It's going to be a brightness layer. And I'm going to increase that brightness to 10. Press OK on that. That's good. And I also want to add a high pass sharpen to this because uh, when, you're, when you're putting it on the web, sometimes a high pass sharpen uh, makes it too sharp. But when you're doing it for print, that high pass sharpen will really pop those details off the table or off the, the page, I should say. I'm going to press Control J to duplicate, or that's Command J on Max to duplicate the background. And I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and then High Pass. Now I'm going to do a high pass of like 0.4. I used to do a high pass of like 8 or 10, and then use Soft Light. But somebody commented on one of my YouTubes, I can't remember his name, I wish I could, that 0.4 was actually a better radius to use. And then instead of using Soft Light, you use Linear Light. And you get a much better high pass sharp, and I do agree with him on that. So that's what I've changed my ways from that from now on. So that's that's my action. I've got it all good. I'm gonna press Control Shift E to get that all flattened. Now I'm gonna go to File, Save As, save it right in that same folder, but save it as a JPEG because they like JPEGs on um, on uh, MPEX. Now I'm gonna change that to one. So I know that this one's done. It's already good to go. And now I'm gonna stop. So the next one I bring in, bring that right here into Photoshop, just open it up. I'm going to do this a little bit faster. Um, I'm going to go to image size, get my size to 11 by that 14.69. I've got the crop tool selected here. I'm going to make my selection. All right, looking at, at the details in the image, I like what's going on to the far right more than the far left. So I'm just going to stick it to the far right. And now I'm going to run my save for print action. It's going to do everything for me. It did the plus 10, it did everything for me, and then it even saved it for me. But unfortunately, it saved it as one. Now that's that's good. Um, that brought us up with a little problem here. Because I saved it the other one as one, it saved this one as one. So if we put a little box in this little box right here, just click that. Uh, this will toggle the state of all dialogues in this action. No, we don't want to do that. Uh, open the save for print, and then right here next to save, put a little box. Check that little box right there. So now what I need to do is open up my other photograph that I saved as as the wrong. Uh, I saved over essentially. I'm gonna do everything really quick on this one again too. Um, image size. It's good for you to see that though. You know those little errors they in these tutorials they. They really do help you out. I did that for you. Yep, there you go. I like that. Now, save for print. It's going to run through all the stuff that it did on the first one. Now it's going to prompt me. What do I want to save this as? So let's save this as two. Now, that's what I should have done in the very beginning. But, you know, you learn your lesson. That's fine, right? 
So now I can do this with all of them. You know, just open up that next one. Image size 11. Get that crop tool going. Look at where the crop is happening. I think I want a little bit of the stuff on the road there. And then commit to it, press play, save it as three. Now you see how much faster this print workflow is going. My high pass is done on each one of these as I go through. Um, I can close these out individually. Now what you can even do is at the end of your action, so let's open up the next one. Uh, let's see what else, what else needs to be done here. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. Image, size, make that 11. Uh, I think I like what's going on the little, right in the middle. Yeah, right, right in the middle. Okay. Now I'm going to press play on this action. I'm going to save it as four. Now I'm, I'm going to add something else to this action. I'm going to go down to where it says save here, and I'm going to press record. Now I'm going to record myself closing the image. Do I want to save it? No, I don't want to save over the TIFF. Now I'm going to stop it. So when I open up the next one, which these ones are going to be 18 by 24 or 12 by 18 my apologies I'm going to open it up now you see at 11 by 14 on a full frame camera uh, it, it, it messes with the, uh, the the ratio because the ratio of a full frame camera is a lot different than the ratio of those four thirds cameras the great thing about a four thirds camera it gets you set up for all the typical prints 8 by 10 11 by 14 but this one needs to be 12 by 18 so a little bit different ratio 12 by 18 okay image oh I need to commit to it image size 12 by it's it's close so when I upload this to to MPEX it'll automatically do all the other stuff for me because it's already cropped it's ready to go I'm gonna press play on that save per print now when I save this as five press OK it's automatically gonna close it when I'm done. So now I don't even have to waste the time closing it. Open up the next one. This one's the same thing. Image size. Make this 12, nope, make it 18, okay. Now I got my crop. My crop is pretty close. I'll just go ahead and leave it, commit to it, and press play. Save it as six. Okay. All right, so now all I have to do, go to MPix, upload those photos, and I'm ready to go. I've already got my show done. I, and that was, let me see my recorder here, 13 minutes. Not only did I get all of my stuff prepped for my show, but I also taught you how to do it for yourself. So again, my name is Blake Rudis, and this is everydayhdr.com. If you have any, uh, ideas for future tutorials, please feel free to email me uh, everydayhdr at gmail.com and I will uh, assess what tutorial you have and look at it, make sure it's something that other people will want to know something about as well and go ahead and put one of those on just for you and uh, for everyone else for that matter. So have a great uh, weekend and visit everydayhdr.com, maybe even subscribe here on YouTube and subscribe on, on uh, everydayhdr.com and you can have all of this stuff coming right to you every time I make a tutorial. Have a great one.